Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary uh, uh, here in Ashland. Uh, and, and I know for those of you who haven't followed the show, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. My day job, I work at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, but this is not about um, that. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've been to the Senior Center and seen one of my presentations, you know that my, my uh, make-believe couple, Frank and Mary's, their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that's Ashland, that means Ashland. They don't want to move to Framingham. They don't want to move to New Mexico. They want to be here. Um, and so the point of the show is to really keep you in touch with the people you need to know and the programs you need to know about to live here. So uh, I got this wonderful co-host, Steve Mitchell, because nobody knows me and everybody knows him. And, and he's found great guests for us for like now quite a long time, right? Like about a year, year, year and a yeah, half? Almost. I think we're going on two years. Right? On two years. Yeah. You know, we can see we're aging in place here in yeah, front of our yeah. screens. So then uh, a couple months ago, we started doing these shows as the COVID-19 edition because we were doing them more regularly because things were changing so much. Uh, and we know that seniors, you know, like my friends Frank and Mary, are the ones who are uniquely affected by all of this. And so we've been trying to keep you up to date on that. Now some of that has calmed down a little bit. Uh, it's still not great, but it's better. And people have kind of adjusted to how their lives are working. And so I think we're going back to the old, to that format, you know, to the, to, to the but, but we're going to do shows whenever we feel that it's appropriate and, and that it would be useful to you. So I have a terrific guest this week. Usually Steve finds somebody, but today I said, I want to interview Steve because um, Steve just got reelected fairly recently uh, to the Board of Selectmen where you've been, is this your th third term, Steve, or your fourth? This is actually my fourth term. This is your fourth term. Yeah. So it's a three year term and uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to, uh, to get reelected uh, against a, you know, a, a strong opponent and uh, but you're know, very pleased to uh, to be back on, and we call it we refer, refer to it now as the Select Board. We did change our officially change our name uh, probably a year and a half ago to the Select Board. And that means that you're a select person. You're no longer a select we are man. Select people. That's correct. You're a select people. So 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 yeah. I was hoping that for this show, Steve, we could I could first of all congratulate you, and then and then we could talk eventually about. You know what you what you're seeing over the next three years, how the last many years, but it, but especially this last period with COVID, has informed your thinking about seniors and what seniors need and what in the future, and then kind of where you think that the town should go with there from from there. But in, but first, I think since we haven't been on for a while, it might be useful to just give folks a little update about kind of what's going on from your perspective there in terms of the reaction to COVID-19 in terms of how your Board of Health is doing, any of those issues. And perhaps if you could even talk for a few minutes about, you know, the budget. Because sure. I know, you know, now that people are, are feeling better that they're not gonna die, they're now getting more worried about how they're gonna pay the bills, right? And, and, and certainly there's been a lot of conversation, we hear about it nationally in terms of, you know, efforts to help subsidize some state and local governments because they get, because they've gotten killed right so could you just talk about that for you know first kind of what's the story with COVID-19 where is it and kind of in your what is your sense of where it's going and then a, a little bit about the town you know more generally in terms of the budget issues well I you know I think I think you hit the two nails on the head Arthur it's really you know I think COVID-19 the way it's impacted uh, you know across the board is both on the, on the health health wise and then also economically as well. So, you know, those are two challenges that, that you know, many, many people uh, are, are facing. Uh, um, certainly those in, in, that have been in the workforce, uh, those that have been either furloughed or laid off, uh, those that have had to apply for um, assistance, unemployment assistance. So, you know, it's, th th these, are, these are huge issues and, you know, it's being played out right now across the country these are the two big issues that we're that we we are all evaluating for the election in November, and uh, you know we're evaluating candidates based on those two metrics. Uh, but in terms of Ashland specifically, uh, you know, fairly early on in the process, we uh, 
created a structure. Uh, we assigned one individual as to, to be the head of our COVID-19 task force. Uh, his name is Ed Berman. He's a sergeant on the police department. Uh, Ed's been on our show. Uh, and that's worked out very well. It's one point person that uh, all of the data and the information that is uh, that that comes out from the state uh, flows through that one point and uh, into the Board of Health, the health agent, so on. And, and they've done a terrific job, the Board of Health, in terms of you know their their uh, process with. Uh, evaluating uh, the needs for COVID-19, the needs of, of community services. So, you know, we did that fairly early on in the process, is, is, is had that, and we've had, early on, we did have some issues with uh, some of our nursing homes, assisted living facilities, having spikes, very much like across the country, as we're, we're aware of, the most uh, vulnerable population. So, we were able to get that under control. Uh, and so fairly recently, and I did speak to, actually spoke to Ed this morning and I got a, a quick update on what's going on today with COVID-19 and the numbers that we're seeing. And, you know, we're, we're, the state is starting to see a, somewhat of a, of a, of, I'm not gonna call it a spike, but an increase in, in cases and so on. And, and, you know, we know that Governor Baker is very keyed in on maintaining a certain range, range of new cases before he responds. So, you know, we talked about that a little bit, but Ashland has had an inc somewhat of an increase as well. Uh, you know, no community is immune to, to uh, uh, new cases at this point. So, you know, that's kind of where we're at with COVID-19 right now. I think we've got a good uh, process in place. We've got, um, you know, a, 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 have assembled a, a collection of resources that are available for residents, uh, particularly seniors in, in general. We've got a, you know, a great human services uh, department uh, that's available. We've created some programs. Uh, relative to uh, supporting both our local businesses and supporting uh, food needs where they might occur. Our food pantry has been active. Uh, we're, in the, we, we're also in the process of, of establishing a, a fund of money specifically for businesses uh, to uh, tide them over to support them. Uh, so that's kind of where we're at with, with COVID-19. Uh, you know, our budget, you know, fortunately, you know, a number of years ago, w working in concert with the finance committee and the school committee, the select board and town management really got engaged in creating financial policies that we all signed on to and that we've all maintained in, in order to uh, create a rainy day fund when we need a rainy day fund. And right now, you know, it's raining. You know, it's not a hurricane yet, but it is raining. And it's so raining. fortunately, we had a, uh, we had reserves that we're able to tap into this year to supplement our budget and really not have a situation where we're cutting programs or laying people off or any of the things that we've seen other communities need to do because they weren't as prepared as we are. So now that you know, obviously that bucket is not going to go on forever. Um, right. So we have, a, you know, uh, this year we probably have a couple of years of reserves that will keep us whole to a, a good degree. Um, you know, this year the, the state came out with their uh, local aid numbers and, you know, that certainly has uh, uh, helped to stabilize the situation. But that's this year. We don't know what's going to happen with state aid next year or the year after. We do know that their their revenues are, you know, I, I guess falling off the cliff is probably the, the best word for it. So, you know, I, I would say short term, uh, budget wise, we're in good shape. Long term, you know, Arthur, to be determined like many things, it's, uh, you know, the future after COVID-19 is no longer a burning issue. 
we don't know what it's going to be like, you know, we really don't. I think, you know, a lot of us have concerns about, you know, local businesses being able to survive. Uh, you know, we have concerns certainly about, uh, you know, all, all of our vulnerable population and the ability to, you know, keep them uh, uh, sheltered and uh, uh, have access to, you know, to food and so on. So, you know, that is something I, I guess we would just be speculating at this point if we were to, you know. Uh, right. And, and so, Steve, just to go back to what you, you said about state aid. So at this point, do you have the number for what they're giving you for this for this fiscal year? For this we do. We, we and, have. And, and, you, and you're saying that, that that whatever that number is combined with the reserves that you have is really going to give you the ability to be, you know, not imposing a special tax on people and not cutting the services, at least during this fiscal year, right? So, and that's yep. great news. I mean, because as you say, that really varies from town to town. And I think for a lot of folks who are watching, the place where they're sheltering in place is in the house and their biggest bill, probably, unless they have big medical expenses other than food, is their tax bill. So they're obviously, you know, gl glad to hear that people were kind of looking out for them. You know. Well, you know, again, it's uh, this was a, a lot of work on uh, a lot of committees and, and, and people working together to establish these policies that we've maintained. And, you know, th we, there's always pressure to spend money here, to spend money there. Um, but we were, I think, uh, strong enough to uh, maintain this discipline. And as, as I say, there are policies that tell us we're going to do this if this happens, we'll do that if that happens, and we've maintained that. So fortunately, we've got uh, the, the, the capacity for reserves plus the state aid that we are getting to, again, keep things whole for this year. That's great. And, you know, maybe, you know, God forbid, maybe lightning will strike and the Democrats and the Republicans will agree and there'll be a package that also helps people out. I mean, certainly a big, it sounds like a big package, a part of the package nationally is all about trying to provide money for, for states, which I assume is going to translate into money for cities and towns if it works, to, to, to help them and to acknowledge the fact that, you know, nobody could have planned for this. This was not any, you know, bad, poor planning on, on, on the part of the state or whatever in terms of who could ever have guessed, you know, that their sales tax would collapse because of the collapse in the hospitality industry. You know, who could, who could guess that, you know? So, it, you, know, maybe, you know, hopefully that'll, it, as you say, you, 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 no, one, no one has a crystal ball and we can't speculate. No. But, it, it's, but it's great to know that, they, that, that basically for the short term in, in Ashland that things are good, right? Well, you know, it, it, good is a you know kind of a, 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 a variable word at this point in time, but you know things can always be better uh, yeah. on many different levels, obviously. But you know, I think at least budget-wise, uh, you know, that's that's the status that the state that we have as. Yeah, of, I think that, you know, that that's a very good point. Good, the definition of good now is like better than a sharp stick in the eye, you know, <laughs> as opposed to you know prior definitions of good. So but, so can we? It, I think that's all great to know, and that's, that's kind of great news. Can we talk now a, a little bit about, you know, you just got reelected. So, so why did you do that? Why did you decide, you know, to do a fourth term? And then d during the campaign, such as it was, because obviously you were constrained because of COVID-19, you know, kind of what did you learn? And, and therefore, what is your sense of things going forward? How do you imagine you know, Ashland changing or Ashland needing to change? And specifically, how do you expect the lives of your seniors to change or, the, or their, their needs or the way that Ashland responds to those needs? I know that's kind of a general question, yeah. but obviously if you were running for your election, so that's the kind of stuff you think about, you know? Yeah, well, I, I, there's, a, there's a lot of questions there, so I'll try to yeah. pick them apart uh, as I recall them. And but you know, as far as why run again for a fourth term at, at my stage of the game, uh, you know, the fact is I've got more miles behind me than I have in front of me. But but still, Arthur, you know this. Uh, there's always unfinished business, and there's always things that uh, you know that you you want to see through. And you know, so one of those big things for, for me actually is a couple things uh, that I think are important. Uh, you know, number one, certainly. 
you know, ensuring that we, uh, we have and we maintain the resources and the programs to support our vulnerable population. And I say vulnerable as opposed to just seniors because, you know, there's a vulnerable population exists through a number of demographics. Uh, so I think that's the way I choose to, to phrase it. Uh, you know, we do have programs specifically for seniors. We continue to maintain that and so on. But, you know, one thing I think that COVID-19 has brought out is that there's a lot of vulnerable population out there. And so that's, that's expanded. So that's one lesson, one takeaway from this. Uh, but as far as unfinished business, you know, things like we're, we're involved, uh, in fact, tonight as we speak, this is a Wednesday, uh, August the 4th, uh, we have a, a, a community forum this evening on Zoom relative to uh, our, our moving forward with a new public safety building. And mm -hmm. we're engaged right now, I happen to serve on the public safety building committee. Uh, we're involved in the design of, of the building uh, and moving that forward. And another takeaway from COVID-19 is certainly the, the need to support our first responders and right. have the resources available for them. Now, Arthur, I don't think you've been into our police station or our fire station at all. Maybe you have, but if you're familiar with them at all, uh, the fire station, I think, dates back to 1920. This is the fire station downtown. We have a second station uh, that is in another part of town. Uh, it's, but very, it's, it's very pretty. I mean, the downtown one is very pretty. It's historic, it, it, but it, as to whether or not it can, it can accommodate today's equipment and things, I, don't, I guess well, that's a different question. It, it doesn't, and, uh, you know, and, and the chief can, uh, can, can describe that pretty well. But, you know, so we, we have, and then our police station, of course, dates back to 1950. And uh, if you were to take a tour of the police station, you'd see ceilings that are falling down. You'd see a lot of things. You'd see um, a trailer in the back where female officers need to. That is their locker room area. It's, oh. it's in a trailer in right. the back of the police station. So, you know, needless to say, the facilities are outdated. Uh, and yet, you know, the community has grown. We've, we've got, uh, you know, the number of calls that are made, most of which, as you know, are health-related issues you know, more and more. So you throw in a COVID-19 and that is a, uh, you know, just another uh, focus on the need to really have strong support for, for public safety and our first responders. So that- I, I suppose, I, I, I didn't mean to cut in, but I suppose that to, to some extent, the whole COVID-19 has really increased that awareness of all of that. Because, you know, you, you, once again, if you're the, if, when I want to say the typical person, but if you're kind of just sitting back and you, you haven't, let's say, had to need those services, right? You think of the fire department as being, they just put out fires, right? Geez, I haven't had a fire in my, you know, yard for a long time. And the police department, you think more of, you know, it's just cops and robbers. And, you know, Ashland seems pretty stable. You know, it isn't a crime hub or anything. But, but, but through those, I you know you've brought on some of those first responders. And, and I remember when you had the COVID-19 guy on the show and you come to appreciate the, the, the really expansive role that those first responders play in figuring out a whole bunch of things, all kinds of emergencies, right? From, well, you, don't from realize, to, yeah, you, know? you don't realize, Arthur, that, that you know, a fire department today, probably the, the least number of calls that they actually make are relative to a fire, right? They're, 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 they're health related, they're accident related. Um, so, and then, you know, for, for a community like Ashland, that is the host of actually two state parks, Ashland State Park, and a good percentage of the uh, Hopkinton State Park is, is in Ashland as well. And, you know, we are, our first responders, our police and fire are responsible for responding to events that occur in the state parks. Now, you know, needless to say, in, in the, particularly this year with, with many people not traveling, plus the weather, the state parks have been very busy. Hence huge, their, huge. 
their response, number of, of calls to the state parks have increased. Now, we don't really get any support from the state regarding that. That's on, that's on, it's our responsibility, which we do. But, you know, factor all that in, and that's really, you know, what, what the police and fire department do today. And, uh, you know, so for me, that's an important unfinished piece of unfinished business is, is seeing that we are successful in, in, in uh, creating a new public safety building. And Steve, uh, it is, is it your sense given, we'll call it, say, given the economics, right? Yeah, yeah. That, 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 you, that you, you think that the people would actually be prepared to go forward with doing that kind of, that kind of work? Or, or is, is that one of those that, that's gonna end up getting put on hold as a result of all this? Well, certainly- Just your, you know, just your opinion. Yeah. yeah, my opinion is, you know, I, 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 I'm hopeful that uh, we have a narrative that supports actually a modest increase in, in taxes. And I say that because we do have a plan in terms of, uh, you know, how a public safety building would be paid for. Uh, a good chunk of it is going to be paid for within the existing tax levy. So we would not require additional taxes for that portion. But another portion would be, we would be re requesting uh, taxpayers to approve a, uh, a debt exclusion to pay for the balance of it. And it's a, it's, it's a relatively modest amount uh, when you look at the whole everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we will be successful with that, uh, but, but who knows? I mean, we, you know, these are very different times, aren't they? Right, and it's about, and it's up to the, you know, it's up to the folks, right? You know, but, but you know, it has certainly been my experience throughout life, money follows good ideas, you know, that if, if, the, if it's the right thing, and as you say, if the narrative is right, yeah, because you're really, you know, you're not selling nothing, you're selling really something, especially in the aftermath math of this of this whole really ex wonderful response to COVID-19 from all these players that may you know it sounds like that's that's not a bad case to be making yeah so and and then I guess the third thing not to belabor you know my unfinished business list but the, the other another thing is the uh, you know we're uh, in the middle of a downtown renovation project as well which in, in, incorporates streetscaping, you know, sidewalks, bicycle lanes, uh, new lighting, some underground utilities and so on. So that's another thing. I mean, downtown Ashland, uh, you know, from this is my opinion, uh, has been tired, has been a tired downtown for for many years. Uh, we do have some some great businesses downtown. I'm talking about the appearance of downtown, not not I'm not talking about the businesses because we we have some great great businesses that have invested into into our downtown and I think we need to make in turn an investment as well to upgrade that that streetscaping and and and, and those those uh, capacities. So that's that's the other thing. Uh, I'll, I'll mention one other important project. Uh, I can't speak a lot about it. But I will I will say that it's a very important uh, project, and that's uh, a school building project, a replacement of the uh, Mendez School, and uh, so that is uh, that's another big uh, piece of uh, of the future for for Ashland. So there's a lot to do, and and, and going back to the, to the streetscapes, um, I know that I I was recently speaking to the person who was really one of the main really a leader in, um, in uh, Brookline of the senior community and developing something called the Villages, the Villages concept. There's a large villages organization, kind of a nonprofit, who's, who they take it upon themselves to really be supportive of the town work and, of, and to be lobbying the town sometime for things that are really important to seniors. And one of the biggest things they've done over the last 10 years has been lobbying for sidewalks, sidewalk improvements, small pocket parks, lighting, because these are, they are, they are, it can be said that they're important for anybody who has a disability, right? But it's also very important for everybody who's just getting older, you know, and is more likely to fall because as you, you and I both know, that's the greatest risk to seniors in terms of a dramatic decline in their health is they just fall down. Sure. 
So, so, th so those kinds of improvements really make the whole community, I would say, a lot better place for my friends Frank and Mary. <laughs> because, you know, because if they, if they got a place, they can go downtown, they can walk around. Hopefully there are some benches so they can sit down, you know, yeah. so and they can enjoy their own town. You know, so that's part of it, Arthur, is, um, you know, we don't have a town common per se. Right. So we have a, you know, kind of a different, a unique uh, little downtown area. And, uh, you know, one of the complaints we get quite often is the lack of parking. Uh, which really translates to, you know, I can't park directly in front of the place that I'm going to, right? right. But, uh, but that being said, it's if we can improve the experience of walking from a parking spot to a, uh, to a business safely and attractively, and if you need to sit down a bench along the way with flower boxes or whatever we can do to make it a better experience, then, you know, I think that's a good thing. So I think, so I guess what you're telling me is that during these next three years, Frank and Mary are really going to like staying in Ashland. You don't want them to move out. I, you know, they, they should be fine be, here. You know, I, I can bring my wife, Bonnie, up to, to join me. We can, we can be, we could sub for Frank and Mary. We have no plans of leaving. So, uh, <laughs> you know, that's, that's the, we're, we're, we're committed to, uh, to staying in Ashland. And, uh, uh, so that's, uh, uh, as, as plainly as I can, I can say it. Well, that's great. So, Steve, I'm, I'm, you know, glad, thanks for being willing to be my guest this week because I think this was an important thing. And in terms of giving, you know, folks at home, a, you know, a chance to, to kind of see where you want to be going on all of this. Right. Well, I appreciate that, Arthur. And as I'm just yeah. reflecting on on the fact that I have interviewed you in the past, if you remember, I think we did two shows for you. Yeah. Because because I'm so long winded. Uh, well, that's part of it. But the other part was there's so many parts to, to elder law and it really took two shows to, to, to really go through it all. So, so I, no, I appreciated that. And so thank you for this. And uh, um, I'm going to look forward to our getting some new guests. I know I don't want to reveal any reveals, but I know you've got some folks in mind that you'd like to have in our next shows. Yeah. And so folks, I, you know, we really appreciate your watching. Uh, once again, we're going to we're going to try to, you know, to keep the shows at either, you know, once every couple of, you know, once every couple of weeks or, or certainly no less than once a month going forward. Um, stay safe unless things change, unless COVID-19 changes and we're back in trouble, in, in which case we'll try to do it more often. In the meantime, please stay safe. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next show. Thanks again, Steve. Thank uh, you, and we look Arthur. forward to seeing you on the next show, uh, on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Ashland. Thank you very much. Be safe, stay healthy. Thank you. Mm -hmm.